I have been running late. I am so sorry. I didn't realize how late it was. I was at my daughter's house having supper with my granddaughter and her friend, <clears throat> and I thought I left in enough time, and all of a sudden I'm driving here, look at my clock on, in my car, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I had to call Lee, tell him I was coming, but I'd be late. Then I got in here and I forgot my notes in my car, so it's just been one of those nights. So I apologize for being late. Welcome. This is Here's Your Good Health. My name is Linda Prezioso. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center. And we are talking about you and your health and what you can do to be the best that you can be. You know, gone are the days where the doctors would tell you what to do and you would just do it. And um, we've got to really take care of ourselves. We've got to um, do the best that we can do. Now, you know, you're going to get sick and get a cold or, or break a finger or something and you've got to go to the doctor. Absolutely. But as far as other things, we need to take care of ourselves as much as possible. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight is self-care. So self-care is the practice of looking after and prioritizing our own mental and physical well-being. Oh, he's going to bring me the phone. Thank you, dear. So, all right, this is March 22nd. It's 712. I'm really late now. Um, and I'm live tonight, so if you've got a call or a comment or you want to talk about something that I'm not talking about, give me a call, 407-1111, and we'll talk about whatever it is you want to talk about because this show is for you, by you, and about you. Not me. Excuse me. I ate a bunch of Chinese food, so that's probably going to make me more tired than normal. Anyway, self-care. Self-care is the practice of looking after and prioritizing your own mental and physical health. Um, looking after yourself is not self-indulgent or being selfish. Self-care means taking care of yourself so that you can be healthy, that you can be well, that you can do your job, you can help and care for others, you can do all the things that you need to do and want to accomplish in a day. There's been, um, Google searches have been increased since 2015. They've more than doubled of um, self-care, the, the Google search for self-care. And according to Paula Lopez, she's a PhD and she's the chair of the psychological consultation at Fair, Fairfield University in Fairfield, Connecticut. And she says, the need for self-care is obvious. We have an epidemic of anxiety and depression. Everybody feels it. And don't you feel it? I do. I can't listen to the news. It makes me mad, and it makes me upset, and it makes me feel hopeless. And I am a firm believer in God, and I believe in that there is hope. And so I just stay away from that. Um, you know, I talk to people all day long. There's a lot of hopelessness in these people, in young people. I see anxiety in my own grandchildren that they're, you know, they get anxious over things that I wouldn't have as a kid. I wouldn't have even thought of as a kid. Now I know that we're in a whole different world, but still, it's just pretty much, we live in a, in a, a terrible world, actually. But um, so the anxiety and depression is, is real and it's there and it affects many, many people. Self-care is part of all of those answers of how to deal with it, how we can better cope with our daily stressors. So why is self-care essential? Why, why do we need it? You, if you feel physically or emotionally or mentally drained, Chances are it is because you are neglecting an area of your own self-care. There are eight um, areas of self-care that we're going to highlight tonight. <clears throat> First is physical care, and this is probably the most critical area of self-care. A lack in this area can affect all other, all other self-care categories not taking care of your own self, you are not in a position to help anyone else. If you're, if you're a mess, you're not going to be able to help somebody. You can ensure that you remain 
in good physical condition by eating a healthy and nourishing meal. You know, how many times have you heard me say, eat healthy, eat fresh, don't eat in the middle of the grocery store, don't eat processed foods, do this, don't do that. I'm like an old grandma, of course I am an old grandma, but you know, there's just certain principles that are true and we've just got to get it in our brains and in our minds of what really we need to do. <clears throat> Eating healthy, nourishing meals is one of them. Moving your body daily. Walking, running, exercising, going to the gym if you're a gym rat, press, bench pressing, whatever, whatever you know, you like to do. Some people love the gym. I like the gym. I just don't, I don't have the time to go. That's pretty bad. I get up in the mornings and get on my elliptical before I go to work. That's, that's how I get my exercise in. So you've got to figure out what, um, what you need to do to get that exercise in. I've always got something to do after work. Today after work, I had to meet somebody at my Medi Spa and then I ran and got some Chinese. Excuse me. Then I went over to my granddaughter's and had supper with her. So I haven't been home. I left the house at seven this morning and I won't get there till after eight tonight. My poor husband, he says, yeah, I have a, w a wife, but I don't see her very often. Um, so, and then another thing that I've really been looking into and studying is probiotics. I've had some tummy issues and some problems in my GI tract and um, some pretty embarrassing moments from it and so I've really been studying and um, after I started taking probiotics I don't have any of those issues anymore so you know probiotics they're good bacteria our bodies are full of good and bad bacteria and um, our gut is one of them. And our gut, is that's where our immune system is. So if our gut isn't healthy, we are not going to be healthy. So, um, you know, self-care <clears throat> consists of taking probiotics, in my view. It consists of taking a good, uh, healthy, or a good um, pharmaceutical-grade multivitamin. And you can get those from either Ward Specialty Pharmacy or you can get them from Remedy This Naturally. As I've said multiple times, I don't buy any supplements from any drugstore other than Ward's. Um, I just, I worry about the quality of the um, um, supplements you're getting. I've just printed off an article, well, I've, I've put it in my email, I haven't printed it yet to read about um, how many stores are saying you have vitamin D or this is zinc or this is magnesium and you're not getting what they say you're getting on the in the labels so we're taking a lot of supplements that are probably just nothing inside probably won't hurt you but the reason you want to take a supplement is for the benefits of that particular herb or that particular mineral or vitamin um, and then drinking water you know this article said drink a full glass of water as soon as you get up. I can't do that. I love water and I drink water all day long, all night long. But um, I'm a coffee girl in the morning. And if I filled my tummy with water, then I couldn't get my coffee in and then I'd be really grumpy. And so I, I'm not gonna do that myself. But they suggest that you drink a full glass of water and then, of course, drink 64 ounces of water a day. And I, I do that for the most part. Some days I don't, but for the most part I do. And then getting between seven and nine hours of good sleep. And this is something that totally eludes me. I am not a good sleeper. I can go to, I try to go to bed the same time every night. I try to practice good sleep hygiene, which is going to bed on you know the same time only using your bedroom for sleep you don't watch TV in your bedroom you don't you have you have sex in your bedroom and you sleep in your bedroom watching TV is in another room playing on your phone is in another room don't have those blue lights that can keep you up in your room it's supposed to be very cool 
because we sleep better in a cool room than a hot room and it's supposed to be black dark so I try to do that but I swear I um I woke up the other night let's see what is this this is Wednesday Monday Monday morning I woke about up at 3 30 and I laid there till 4 30 I just can't lay that long in the bed and so then I got up so you know I, I don't get between seven and nine hours of good sleep um, as it is I'm up at least twice if not three times a night so in that seven hours I'm in my bed and um, I'm up two or three times so if anybody has any um, ideas or has something that works for you let me know I've always been a poor sleeper and I just I thought maybe once my kids were raised that I didn't have that stress that I would be better but it's not working out that way for me and then you know get out get out in the sun we can start doing that now it's starting to get nice soak up some of those rays soak up some vitamin D um, spend time in nature enjoy the beauty that God has created for us the blue, beautiful blooming trees the budding trees the daffodils that are starting to poke out from the ground all of those things and then you know have a soothing hot bath or a shower either at the end of your day or at the beginning of your day whatever you prefer so I, I know I'm running late but it is time for a commercial so I'm gonna we'll take this commercial and then we'll come back with more of your self-care and here's your good health so don't go away we'll be right back loved ones families want compassionate comforting care that's tender touch home care services goal providing the level of care we would expect for our own with over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. Here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose to hard to find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almond's Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almond's, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. All right, let me just say something about almonds. I don't know if you all know, but they have closed their Westridge store. They were having a really hard time finding help, and they were spread thin between two stores. And so they own the building on Fairview, and they uh, rented on, West, on Sunset. So they've closed that store, and they're all, everything is over at Westridge. So I, I've got to talk to Rich and Unge and tell them we got to upgrade that commercial a little bit. 
So, um, but they're still here and they're still working. They still deliver. They do everything's the same except they're just in one location now instead of two. So be sure you use them as much as possible for a, you know just a really good pharmacy experience. All right. So we'll move on to mental self care, and this of course would encompass the. Um, the stress and the um, anxiety and depression and all that we feel. But this involves your psychological and cognitive thinking and your mind's ability to understand and process information ex and experience. Mental self-care um, practices self-help self and it stimulates the mind and improves the brain's functionality as well as developing a growth mindset. So some of the ways that we need to help ourselves with self-care is going to therapy. You know, there's nothing wrong with therapy. There's nothing wrong with going and saying, look, I, I have this issue. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to handle it. That's what they went to school for. That's their profession. And it's very confidential, and it's not demeaning, and it's not... Um, embarrassing to go see a counselor and talk about these things. It's good for you. It helps you get that stuff off of your chest and look at the world the way we're supposed to see it, not the way we perceive it, because that, that can be two different things. Then journaling. You know, I journal every day. Um, I cry out to God. I cried out to God two days ago and said, I can't take this anymore, and I just whined and cried. And then a breakthrough came, and so this morning when I journaled, it was, thank you, God, because the breakthrough is here, and there's going to be an answer to what I've been crying and praying for. And then um, practicing mindfulness, and that could be a whole show itself, but mindfulness is basically living in the moment. Don't worry about what's going to happen, you know, after you leave, after I leave the show and drive home. I'm in this moment. This is the only moment of time I'm going to have within this day to be with you, to talk to you. And, you know, it, it goes away after a while, so we need to enjoy every moment that we have. Then there's emotional self-care. This involves your feelings and ultimately your behavior. It is your emotional intelligence, management, and expression of your feelings. You can develop your emotional intelligence by several ways. Learning to distinguish between various emotions. You know, we are not supposed to live by our emotions. God gave us emotions, and they're there for a reason. But anybody who's ever made a, a decision in an emotional state, they know that, that you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking as clearly as you could. And so, you know, that might not be the best way. So you've got to, you've got to learn about those emotions and learn how to act on them when they need to be acted on and go, just go through it when you need to go through it. Um, healing from childhood trauma. You know, I think we all have some kind of childhood trauma, and that goes back into good therapy. Um, we perceive things differently as a child. You know, my kids will talk to me about things, and I definitely don't remember that, the way that they're talking about, but it's real to them. Whether it really was true or not, it's real to them, and it shaped them and helped form their thinking and their way of doing things. So. We all have a certain amount of trauma from our childhood. We've got to learn how to deal with it. You've got to know what your triggers are, identify them, and then don't let them, if something makes you really mad, don't go around it. Don't allow that incident or that speech or that way of talking, whatever it is, whatever your trigger is, you know, you, you need to stay away from it. And if you do hear it, you need to say, okay, that's a trigger. I just need to take, you know, hold my breath, count to 10, maybe do it again. So you don't jump on the emotion, but you think things through. Uh, you've got to develop healthy coping skills. Now, drinking alcohol or doing drugs is not a healthy coping skill. It might help temporarily to make you forget 
but sooner or later that's going to come back to haunt you so we've got to learn good ways healthy ways to to cope with our stressors go for a walk walk in nature take a nap read a good book go to a movie watch a comedy make yourself laugh there's things that we can do exercise is a great stress reliever um, and learning how to deal with and manage stress that kind of all falls in together we've got to learn to forgive you know there's lots of things that happen to us and to our families and to our loved ones throughout our days on this earth but we cannot um, we cannot cling on to something and not forgive people make mistakes we all grow where we were 10 years ago we're not there now and we just got to um, to forgive and we've got to let go of the past whatever happened in the past whoever it happened with it's gone it's done it's behind you let's focus on today and you know plan for the future if you you know you can't just say okay tomorrow I'm going on a trip no that's something you have to plan for and think about and pay for and all that kind of stuff so um, we can't we can't always live in the moment it we can for a lot of things but some things they have to be planned and then there's social self-care and that's the ability to build and maintain healthy interpersonal relationships with others. You know this area of self-care is okay when you're able to form a new professional and personal relationships. If you have the same friends all the time and you can't walk into a, a group of new people without holding your friend's hand, then you need to work on those those skills you should be able to walk into a room and say hi my name's Linda how are you it's nice to meet you that's just simple conversation it's nothing you know that takes a lot of practice or somehow you have to be raised you just have to learn how to have different relationships you can have new friends that are not going to be as, as um, dear to you as somebody you've known for 30 years and that's okay you can have a new friend it's great um, and we need to stay and connected to the important people in your life you know if there's somebody some people that have really made a big impact on you you're really enjoying them they they've helped shape you or mold you maybe in some way we need to hang on to those relationships don't let those go um, and then interact with your community you know I'm a big community advocate I love Rocky Mount because it is um, community minded there's lots of areas and lots of things that we can do to help our community um, I just finished doing a go 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 red for women banquet which is a fundraiser for the American Heart Association you know that's always a great thing to do I've enjoyed it I even enjoyed going and asking for money which I never thought I would but it was kind of nice to meet other people um, and there's so many good organizations that you can hook up with you can hook up with organizations the Lions Club um, um, can't think of any off the top of my head my husband belongs to the Legion you know it's a group of um, veterans that get together I think they meet once a month there's different various clubs that do good social things for our you know fundraisers there's the United Way there's I uh, just talked to I heard somebody speak from Downey's Partnership for Children so there's lots of places that we can go and give some of our energy to and some of our input to and of course you've got to spend time with your friends and family you know we love our families and we love to spend time with them and that's of course great and we love our friends and want to spend time with them but if you just hang if you just only hang with your family or only hang with this group of friends then you're not going to grow anymore you're going to be stagnant in your relationships um, and then you know social self-care means that you can reach out to your support systems when you need it or on a regular basis 
if you're an alcoholic, the AA meetings are your social, your social support. If you um, are a nurse, you know, you might get together with a bunch of nurses once a quarter and go out for dinner. Or um, there's, you know, there's all sorts of support systems for you. You just have to figure out which one you need to be in. You've got to learn how to ask for help when you need it. None of us are an island. None of us can do this thing called life alone. We all have to have help with it. We all have to um, reach out for help at some point. You know, I'm, I'm pretty busy and um, I had a couple of events upcoming and I've had to ask my friends to step in and be there for me because um, I couldn't be there for whatever reason. So you've got to be able to have that. Set healthy boundaries for yourself. We want to make sure that, you know, if you know that you can't hold your liquor, well, don't go to a bar and drink. You know, go to go to your friend's house and play cards and drink lemonade. Um, you you've got to know your boundaries. You've got to set boundaries. I'm only going to um, spend. I'm going to spend ten minutes today walking outside. That's not a big chunk of time. And even though the sun wasn't shining as much today as it has some, it was still a pretty nice day. And we could have enjoyed spending 10 minutes out in this outside. Okay, then we can go on to spiritual care. Excuse me. Spiritual self-care. And this is different for everyone, of course. Faith is more important in some communities than others. We... Um, when you can find hope and peace in challenging situations, that's that's your faith, that's that's your spiritual side. So it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic, it doesn't matter if you're Assembly of God, we're all people, we're all here, and it's okay to have a different faith. It's okay to think differently. Faith and spiritual self-care is not about you have to do it my way. No, it's about what what ministers to you? What makes you feel better? What gives you hope and peace? That's what, um, that's what, to me, that's what um, being spiritual is. And, you know, if somebody asks my beliefs, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to share with them how I believe. But I don't believe in pushing things down other people's throats. If they're interested, they'll ask. And if they're not interested, that's okay. But, you know, I, I personally, I like to be an example of um, peace, an example of hope, and an example of, of how to be the peace in the storm of a challenging situation. And so I, I hope that I do that. Sometimes I do. Probably I don't do it enough. But it's just important that we do that for ourselves. And you know, we um, we take care of our spiritual self care by believing in God. Now, whether it's God, whether it's Allah, you know, there's different forms. I'm not going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. You have to figure that out for yourself. And then going to church, or going to your synagogue, or going to your mosque, um, you know, whatever brings you comfort, whatever you feel is more important for you to um, to do and then read the Bible or the Quran or whatever your spiritual source comes from read that and instill those principles into your life pray of course spend time alone with God your God um, being quiet in nature but this whoever wrote this article they really liked um, the nature which is good I like nature too and then you can meditate it's always good to just sit and ponder sometimes that's what I do in the morning instead of reading a chapter or two I might just look at one verse and if it kind of pops out to me and I feel like it's saying something to me well I might just meditate on that and think only about that so um, yeah there's just a lot of spiritual self-care we can do. All right, it's time for our next break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about self-care. So don't go away. We'll be right back with you.
care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. Here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports to compression hose to hard to find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almonds Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almonds, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. Welcome back, hey. I, I'm Linda Prezioso, nurse practitioner at Family Medical, and this is Here's to Your Good Health. I was just talking to Randy, who has a show after me, and he's got some interesting things to talk about, how some streets extended and stopped somewhere originally and how they projected farther on. And Civil Air Patrol, he's got aerial photos to show of that. My son, my oldest son was in the Civil Air Patrol. Is that still going on, Randy? Oh, yes. And still going on today. It's a great opportunity for young people. It's a great volunteer project, and it's a great um, thing to show kids how to serve their community. So you be sure you be stay tuned after I get done so you can watch Randy. He always has an interesting show and brings out lots of interesting facts from Rocky Mount, so that, that's gonna be good. All right, back to our self-care. So we have um, environmental self-care. Um, besides financial rewards, um, work helps you to be independent in creating the lifestyle you want for yourself. You have a when you have a positive work space, you're going to give yourself environmental self-care. When you um, do good work and have life balance, you're going to have good environmental self-care. Um, healthy work boundaries. You know, you can have some bullies that work and, oh, here we go. I hope I can remember how to do this phone. I never do it right. Hey, this is Linda. How are you this evening? This is Robert. Again. Hey, Robert. Okay. How, it's nice. Okay, to I want to tell you. I want to ask you something. Okay. How can you? How can you? Now, my doctor, the VA, put me on a diet. Okay. okay. Five years ago. Mm-hmm. One egg, one sausage, toast, or cereal with oat with uh, two percent milk. Okay. Oodles and noodles. Oodles and noodles lunch which is in water okay and at lunch time you take an ice cream or supper time take an ice cream scoop a scoop one scoop of potatoes one scoop of peas one scoop everything that i've been eating has been either baked or cooked in the water i don't eat no meat or beef i eat chicken mm -hmm. 
I don't. Okay? And, and the thing about it, how do you expect people in North Carolina to lose weight when every five feet in this place is chicken place? It's fried chicken this and fried chicken that. Or it's a buffet. Bag. I mean, what's killing you? What's making them fat? There's the fat and the grease, okay? Mm-hmm. If you, I, have, I will not step foot in a McDonald's or, it, or any of those fast food restaurants. I haven't eaten in a fast food restaurant for 12 years. Wow. Well, good for you. And I'll tell you why. Wow. North Carolina better get with the program because New York State Attorney General, about 10 years ago, had McDonald's, fast food, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera, the beef tested, and they found out it's either soybean or it was oatmeal. Oh, really? Okay. All right. When you eat a hamburger at McDonald's and it's rubbery and you got to pull it, it's like pulling a piece of rubber mm-hmm. that's either soybean, okay, or it's oatmeal, all mm-hmm. right? How come the new, uh, state of North Carolina attorney general hasn't had the food inspectors to go in these restaurants, they, they inspect them for dirtiness, but why don't they inspect them for the meat? And I'll bet you nine out of ten of them would have either soybean or oatmeal in it, okay? I mean, you can't grease up the meat and then expect people to lose weight. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I, everything that I eat is cooked in water. I microwave my egg, scramble it. I microwave everything. I use no oils, no greases, no fats, nothing. And I went from 266 down to 206. Wow. But I've been that way for five years. And my VA doctor says, it could go down a little lower, but apparently that's your weight. Uh-huh. That's exactly your exact yeah. weight. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I've been 206 for the last five years since I've been going on that diet. Well, good for you. I'm proud of you. That's quite an accomplishment to not only do it, but stick with it and to maintain your weight. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. I, like I say, my blood pressure when I was, I used to be at one time, when I used to be, when I lived in New York State, now not city, upstate. There's, right. There's two different New Yorks here, okay? Yes, New yes. York, upstate. I weighed 300 and some odd pounds, okay? My heart used to pound and pound and pound, right? My blood pressure has dropped down to 90, 120 over 88. It That's hasn't great. moved up and it hasn't moved down. Mm-hmm. I don't have as much pressure on my heart or my chest or my legs, and I feel a lot lighter. Good. Oh. That's great. Yeah, thank, thanks to the VA doctor that I had. Well, I'm glad you had a good doctor. Is he in Durham or Greenville? No, he, well, he's in Greenville, but I do have to run to Durham for certain things, but uh-huh. mostly Greenville, okay? And he's uh, Afro-American. He's about six. He's about six foot ten inches high. Oh wow! Big I'm only guy. five foot ten inches, and I gotta look <laughs> up at him. Uh huh. He's a hell of a nice guy. Oh, a nice guy. That's great. Nice doctor. That's great. Well, thanks for calling, and congratulations on that accomplishment. That's really awesome. But people got to get out of these fast food restaurants, and they've yep. got to get out of these pizza places, or you're not going to eat grease ten yeah. times a day. You're going to stay fat. That's, that's all there is to it. And there's no nutritional value in it either, so there's that. Uh, like, like I said, Linda, I won't step foot in a fast food restaurant. I yeah. will never, again, I, was, I turned 76 here on this last 25th of this last February. Uh-huh. I turned 76, and I don't have any medical problems. Wow, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Thanks so much for calling. That's really an encouragement to me. I hope it's encouragement to the audience out there. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. I don't know if I turned it off or not. I never know how to work that thing. All right. Where were we? Work self-care. Did we talk? We did talk about work, didn't we? Or I don't know if we did or not. So you know, of course, work gives you financial rewards, and we all go to work so we can pay the mortgage and pay the light bill and pay the car payment and buy groceries and 
according to Robert, never go to another fast food restaurant, which none of us really need to go to a fast food restaurant. Um, so, you know, work self-care gives you those financial rewards. It also teaches you how to be independent and it teaches you how to create the lifestyle that you want for yourself. And you can do this by um, a positive workspace, good work and life balance. That's where I'm I, I'm not as balanced as I need to be. Healthy work boundaries, proper time management, and I think I gotta really work on this work self-care because I'm a workaholic, I work all the time, and that's not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, and then we have financial self-care, and that's being in control of your finances and having a sense of security then you, you have the liberty to live the life on your own terms without having to worry about money. And I was just listening to Dave Ramsey on the way here. I don't know, he has, he's some financial guy. I don't know, I don't know the name of his program. But it, it, he's pretty big and um, a lot of, like our church does a, a seminar with his stuff. And he basically says you pay cash for everything. You know, you get out of debt, you work on, paring down all of your debt and after you, um, you, you first of all you, you get a good savings account and you have an emergency um, fund that if an emergency happens you've got the cash to bail yourself out of that and then you get yourself out of debt and then you you know save more money they, he, he wants everybody to buy a car with cash he wants everybody to have a paid off mortgage and um, you know, so those are my goals. I'm not there yet. I was not a very good financial steward in my past. I'm really trying and learning how to be better now. So those, that's kind of me. I'm giving you all my, the good, the bad and ugly about me and some of my stuff going on. So that's kind of it for self care. I did want to, uh, I read this article on the Mediterranean diet, which is a good healthy diet. It's probably one of the healthiest diets in the whole world, actually. And it stems from the Mediterranean, where people there eat fresh every day, they move every day, they cook every day, and they're all very healthy, like Robert here. They're all very healthy and they're all, um, pretty much disease free. They don't have the diseases that, that we do. And they, they don't eat any fast food, I can tell you that. So, but this article says that um, the Mediterranean diet is linked with a reduced risk of developing dementia. Dementia is a horrible, horrible, horrible disease that infects 55 million people around the world. And this particular study said that if you eat a Mediterranean diet, um, you'll, you'll have less, less chance of developing um, dementia. And the Mediterranean diet is rich in seafood and plant-based foods, up to 23, and the, the people that they tested had up to 23% lower risk for dementia than those who had lower adherence to the diet. Um, in absolute terms, the research found sticking closely to a Mediterranean diet was equivalent to a 0.55% reduction in the risk of, develop, of developing dementia. That doesn't seem like it's, you know, that's a little over half of a percent, but dementia is terrible. And it, it's horrible for, I don't know how horrible it is for the patient, but it's really devastating on the the caregiver, the one who lives with the person with the dementia. Um, Dr. Boyette, who is um, with, with Nash Hospice, and he has dealt with Nash Hospice, he's been with them probably for 20 years now. He used to be an OB here in town and he had a lot of health problems, so he had to quit delivering babies, it was too stressful. And um, so he went into hospice and he says that um, treating dementia and taking care of dementia, in his, in his view, is worse than people that have cancer. And cancer is pretty bad. 
but dementia, it really, you know, you lose your loved one. The loved one might be there physically, might look like your wife or your mama or your sister, but inside their brain is not who they were when you knew them when you were growing up. So it's really, it's really, really tough. Anyway, the Mediterranean diet has an impressive list of science behind it. This way of eating can, be, can prevent cognitive decline, but it also helps the heart, reduces diabetes, prevents bone loss, encourages weight loss, and more. Um, so I, I don't want to go into all the statistics and all that, but I just thought it was pretty interesting that um, eating healthy, as I've talked about over and over and over and over again, um, it, it, you know, it just, it just makes sense to eat right. And Robert can attest to that, 70, what do you say, 76, and not a medical problem. I mean, that's awesome. I, I work with sick people every day, and I can tell you I don't see that very much. So, all right, I'm done for tonight. Thank you for watching and listening. I apologize for being late and, um, so we will stay tuned now for Randy. He's got some interesting stuff going on. And I'll see you next week with more Pierce Sugar Tales. Have a great evening. Good night.